So this is the video many of you have been waiting for and we're going to take a very deep dive into candlestick trading, candlestick analysis, how to read them, how to trade them, what are the different signals. So let's get going and I've prepared a lot of different trade and chart studies for all the different trading styles. We're going to take a look at trend trading, pullback trading, reversal trading. So make sure to stick around until the end because there are lots of special techniques coming. And I would love to hear from you, which trading style do you favor? Do you like to be a trend following trader or are you engaging in pullback trading or do you try to master and become a reversal trader? Let me know in the comments below so that I have an idea of what do you actually trade so that I can make more videos going forward. And let's get started. So the first one is an engulfing reversal, very simple very standard approach, very standard uh, technique. And the most important part is not necessarily or not only, I should say, the candlestick, which we're going to take a look at in a moment, but the whole context. And a main reason why so many traders are failing in trading and also in price action trading, although it is quite simple, which doesn't mean that it's easy, however, it's quite simple, it is that they look at just candlesticks in isolation and then they forget to look at the whole picture and then they trade candlesticks where they actually don't make sense and where you have no edge or only a very small edge. So here when we are looking for reversal candlesticks, where do you want to look for them? You want to look for them after long trending periods. So when the trend has already been going on for a long, long time, then the likelihood of seeing a reversal is obviously much higher compared to when the market is just getting started. And later on, I've prepared a few other reversal studies. We will take a look at different combinations, different contexts, so that by the end you will have a very deep understanding of how to look for them. So here you can see the market is in a very strong uptrend and then here at the top you will see an engulfing candle. And let's zoom in here. And when we zoom in you can see this is the engulfing pattern. It's a two candlestick pattern. The first candlestick is here a bullish green candle. The second one is a red engulfing candle, a bearish candle. And you can see the second candle is completely falling outside of the first candle. So as the name suggests, it is engulfing the previous candle. So it's completely outside of the first candle. And this is a very strong signal that sellers are coming into the market. And you can see that when we look at the previous uptrend, never have we seen such a huge candle. So again, we have two layers of confluence or even three. We have very long trend where the likelihood of seeing reversal is increasing. And you can see we suddenly have a huge candle that is engulfing and we have never seen such a huge candle here during the whole trend. And this is another great confluence factor. And afterwards you see the market is really collapsing. Here we have an engulfing continuation because engulfing candles or any candlestick for that matter can also happen as a continuation setup. And you can see the market bottomed out here. We have a low here, we have a higher low here and we have another higher low here. So in an uptrend, you are looking for higher lows and higher highs. And you then want to look for pullbacks in an uptrend because we are here in an uptrend and you want to buy. And what is the best price to buy at when the market is going up? You want to buy for the lowest, for the cheapest possible price. And the cheapest price is, as I've said a few times in my last videos, happens during pullbacks when the market is coming back. That's when you want to buy. And you can see, you can also look for support and resistance, supply and demand levels. And then you time your trades with using candlesticks. So what happens here? You can see that here this green candle is completely engulfing the previous red candle. And you have not seen such a big green candle before that. So this is a great context. We're in an uptrend. We are in a pullback. And then suddenly here's maybe also a, supp a supply level in here waiting. And then you can see we have a new uptrend starting. So a great engulfing candle at a continuation place. You can also use a moving average, for example, to improve your pullback and your continuation trading. So in this example, I use the 50 period moving average. It's a exponential moving average. And this is the blue line here. And again, the market crossed above the moving average. So technically it's in an uptrend. And if you have missed the first trading opportunity or maybe you're looking for places to add to your existing position, then you best do that when the market is going against you or when the market is going against the trend. And moving averages are generally used for those types of pullbacks. So you don't trade just because the market is trading into the moving average. You don't just 
blindly buy because the market is touching the moving average, but you wait for some signals. And I've prepared a few other studies later with the moving averages on how to time those pullbacks. And you can see here, as soon as the market touches the moving average, first you have a very decent big red candle, and then here you have a bullish engulfing candle. Let's zoom in and you can see this is how it looks. So first of all, the market is always trying to scare you. It's always trying to make it not as obvious of what is going to happen. So you can see the market is really accelerating actually into the moving average. So a, a very big red candle, which may scare a lot of people or may make you wonder, hmm, this doesn't look really like I should be buying. And you shouldn't at this point. However, then the next candle here, you have a huge engulfing candle, very big uh, green candle, the biggest green candle that you have seen during all of this pullback. And it's a clear sign that the power dynamics between the bulls and the bears are shifting. And you can see then the uptrend is continued. We have a double pin bar. Pin bars are great. However, pin bars are not strong enough on their own. Many traders try to trade pin bars. They're trying to make their life a little bit too easy, if you ask me. And this is, um, I compare it to using shortcuts or looking for shortcuts. Pin bars on their own are not strong enough, but if you add context and confluence, they can be really great trading tools. And especially here, we have a double pin bar. Those are great, great um, patterns. And you can see when we zoom in, the market is coming from a strong uptrend here, very strong trend to the upside. And then you have one pin bar and then you have an engulfing pin bar. So the second pin bar here is even taking out the previous highs. So again, I would never recommend just trading a single candlestick, a single um, pin bar because they're not strong enough. And many traders will jump on this first candlestick. However, this is not strong enough and then you pay the price for that. You will get immediately punished here within the next candlestick. Because where do people who trade the first pin bar going to put their stop loss? Just above the candle high. And then the next pin bar is exactly aiming for that. It's taking out the previous high, then reversing to the downside, taking out the stops. And then you can see this is then when the trend unfolds. Here we have a trap pin bar. And where is this taking place? It's taking place after a long downtrend. You can see very, very strong and long downtrend. And then here we have our trap mechanism which obviously as the name suggests is trying to trap the traders it's going to make it look like the market is breaking out let's zoom in a little bit here you can see the market is trying to break out and then in the same candle immediately pulls back leaves this pin bar and then here accelerates into the opposite direction so a pin bar at a previous low after a long downtrend those are great reversal opportunities and especially if it happens with a trap we have an exhaustion pin bar, very different. And again, the market is in an uptrend, very strong uptrend. Where is the uptrend heading into? When we look left, you can see here's a huge supply level, a very, very big level, and it makes sense to look for reversals at this stage. And what happens here? Let's zoom in. And you can see the market is making higher highs and higher lows all the way until here. Here was the previous highest point. Then the market makes another attempt pushes through the supply zone, pushes through the last swing high, and then reverses immediately to the downside, leaves this pin bar, and then starts this uh, downtrend. This is also a very important three candlestick pattern, which I will cover later on in this video. So make sure to wait around until the end, because this is a very important pattern. And you can see that when you just look at the highs, how how high are the highs moving actually? So the distance from one high to the next high will tell you a lot about the trend strength. And from this high to this high, obviously it's a very short distance, which doesn't indicate a lot of buying interest, which doesn't show that there are a lot of people who want to buy. The sellers get in because the price has become so high that it's now interesting for the sellers to sell. It's interesting for the buyers to exit, to take their profits. And then you can see this is how the market collapses. A continuation double pin bar. So now we are stacking confluence and confluence on top of each other. We are using a moving average here and you can see the market is in an uptrend, pulls back here into the moving average. Let's zoom in. And how does it pull back into the moving average? First of all, with a strong bearish candle, it leaves the wick. And then the next candle here is an engulfing candle. The fact that it doesn't engulf the low by maybe one or two points is not as important. This is not brain surgery. So you may get away with not having a fully engulfing candle if it just comes down to one or two or maybe even three pips. Totally fine. And you can see then the candle closes at almost the absolute high point. 
a very strong close which we haven't seen during the whole pullback since the market topped out here so a very strong bullish signal and then you can see we also have two pin bars which is in technical analysis called a tweezer and you can see that this is when the trend was continued to the upside. So a lot of things coming together here to help us build a lot of confluence and context. We have another pin bar pullback and pullbacks are great because they are trend continuations. However, trend continuations at a very favorable price. Again, I, it, it's so important that I repeat it. The market is in a downtrend, you wanna sell, but where do you wanna sell? You wanna sell when the price is at its highest point. You don't want to sell when the market is low because then you don't have as much profit potential but you want to sell for a high price so that then you can later buy it back for a much uh, lower price. So this is uh, the general idea and you can see the market was in a downtrend, bottomed out, pulled back and let's zoom in and you can see again how does it pull back and how does it react at the moving average. Uh, you have two pin bars here or two wicks at least. Uh, two times a rejection, a wick, a wick uh, of a candlestick is always considered a rejection. Especially where does it happen is very important. At the moving average is two rejections. And then here this red candle is especially strong. Doesn't fully engulf the previous candle. However, you can see the body of the candle is very strong. It, the body completely engulfs the previous body. And you can see the candle closes at the absolute low of the candle here. We have a doji rounding at a very weak top. So again, we are not only looking at dojis. Dojis are interesting, but obviously just a single doji is not enough. And again, what are we looking for? We are looking for a very strong trend. The market is making higher highs and higher lows. But look at this. How is the market going from here to here? The market makes a higher high, granted, but first of all, there's a huge, huge pullback here, a huge correction wave. And looking at this previous trend, you can see that during this whole trend, there was never such a strong correction wave. So this already shows you that at this point, the sellers were able to push the price down that much. Probably there was also a lot of profit taking going on of the buyers, which is also contributing to the correction wave. So that's the first piece to the puzzle. And then the next piece to the puzzle is that here, the distance from this high to this high is very small. So the, the buyers were not able to push the price that much higher and then let's zoom in here we have a concept of deceleration so the candles from here to here to here to here get smaller and smaller and smaller what does it tell you it tells you that the momentum behind the trend is losing strength and you can see that more and more buyers are withdrawing and then here the next candle is a huge market collapse. So you can see there's a huge candle here closing at the absolute low. It pretty much engulfs the past one, two, three, four candles here and a very, very strong selling signal at the right place. So this context here is absolutely amazing. And this is just the current um, start of a downtrend. This is the market situation that is currently in. So it looks like the market is completely turning into a new downtrend. Here we have a doji exhaustion and we have concepts of deceleration and acceleration, which I will go into. So we are looking at a downtrend and then at the downtrend, the market is showing you here a few dojis. Let's zoom in and you can see here we have pretty strong red candles, very strong bearish candles, but then suddenly the market just completely dies off. After such a strong bearish candle, what would you expect? You would expect more selling because this candle indicates that there's a lot of selling going on. However, it doesn't happen. And the market, you can see we have a doji candle, we have another small candle, we have here a pin bar rejection, and then here we have an acceleration candle. So we have this concept of deceleration where the market is slowing down in form of dojis, and then we have acceleration where the market is well accelerating or speeding up, moving away from the bottom. So this is a very nice, it shows a very nice gradual change. The market comes dropping like a stone, then it slowly it's it turn uh, it bottoms up and then it accelerates slowly and you can see the market is then really picking up a lot of force and starting a new uptrend we have a, dub, a doji double top with a lot of rounding so the market is in an uptrend and here clearly a double top whereas in the previous example let's go back here the market did make a higher high also it was still a very small higher high nevertheless it was a higher high here, the market was not even able to make a higher high. This is a double top. The market only was able to get into the previous high points. 
Let's zoom in and you can see here we have the double top. We have one, two, three, four, five dojis. So five candles where the market did not move at all. And then here a huge, huge market collapse. So this is a great, great sequence again um, at perfect context, long trend, which makes the likelihood of a trend reversal more likely uh, or increases. We have a double top where the market was not even able to push higher. We have a strong correction wave. Uh, we have a lot of dojis which show indecision in the market and then this huge collapse. And you don't have to get in and you shouldn't get in just because there's a doji. But once you see that the market is really picking up into the new direction, that's your clue and you can see you don't have to catch the absolute top. You should aim at getting in a little bit later and there's still a lot of profit potential uh, waiting here. Here we have a three candle reversal pattern. So of course here at the core there is a pin bar. However, as I said, pin bars are not strong enough. And this three candle reversal pattern, it's called, I think the abandoned baby or the morning star, evening star, uh, you can Google for that. Uh, it doesn't matter what name it is, however, what does it tell you? It's again, behind that is the concept of deceleration and acceleration. So the market is very strongly moving higher, which should indicate a lot of buying power here behind this candle. However, this is not happening. You have a pin bar. Let's zoom in. We have this pin bar here, which shows you rejection. And then we have a strong bearish candle into the opposite. When we look at this previous uptrend here, we have never seen such a strong bearish candle. So a dozen or probably two or three dozens candles. This is the biggest bearish candle that we have seen. And we are seeing it with a lot of uh, context here, a, a pin bar as well. So this is a very different picture. And again, you don't have to trade and you shouldn't trade just because there's a pin bar. But once you see this three candle reversal pattern, that is your clue. And here exactly the same. We're looking at a strong uptrend and then here uh, the same sequence or a very similar sequence. Strong bullish candle, immediately the price dies off and momentum uh, dies down and then you have a strong bearish candle into the opposite direction. So you have the concept of deceleration and acceleration. This is a very strong um, confluence factor, especially if you then look left and you maybe find a support level, a horizontal um, supply and demand zone, maybe a big round number, maybe a previous high, a previous low or anything that adds another layer of confluence can then be added on top of your candlestick analysis. And that's it. Those are one of the more or a few of the more important candlestick patterns and how to use them in context. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you watched it until the end, please make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe and share this video with all your trading friends. The more views this has, the more often I will make those videos. So make sure to spread the word, make sure to share it and thank you for all the support.